Ao shalom rastafari and a rasiadimnos tafari neng. And we're still in the third sabbatical portion, the third sabbatical portion known as Lek Leka. Now, I said this before in the early one that in our studies of Judaism, in our studies of what has been already written concerning Judaism, that among the OJs, so the other Jews, there's a lot of racism. That's very clearly, but a lot of black folks will never ever get to see it because they never get to read or study so-called Judaism from the so-called Jewish perspective, even though they say they're Christians and Christ says that you worship that which you know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, Jesus Christ says that right there in the Bible. So you would think that Christians, and we're speaking especially to our people, the lost sheep, black people in America and the black people in the world, that they would as a Christian, would look into the background of Jesus Christ, which is Judaism, in order to get a better comprehension and understanding of their so-called Lord and Savior and way of life. But anyway, I said I was going to show this before, and um, I have the opportunity. Now, where did I put this book? Here we go. It fell on the side. This is an old, somewhat old um you can see it's kind of worn out right here. It's called the Chumash, the Chumash, the Chumash, right, or Kumash. Some um, will say Chumash, but it's not Chumash, it's Chumash. There's no ch sound in, um, in uh, Hebrew in that sense. So anyway, in this particular portion, Lek Leka, which is the third um, Torah, weekly Torah portion since the most recent um, Simchat Torah, or the joy of the law. As he was going through this to prepare additional teachings, readings, and feedings from this particular Torah portion, we came across some of the footnotes down here, and it's very well footnoted, and in most places it's pretty accurate with the ancient testimonies and many of the ancient, the most ancient testimonies from the real, authentic ethnic Jews, but they've rewritten it. The European Jews, the OJs, the other Jews have rewritten it. But in their rewriting it, sometimes they allow their own voice, their own voice to show through. And this is one of those particular cases that we find here in Lek Leka. So let us bring this up and show it to you because People say seeing is believing, although that's not spiritually true. That's not really true, but at least if you see the evidence, you can base your conclusions on the evidence. So here in this particular portion called uh, Lek Leka, um, Lek Leka, uh, which begins from 12 and 1. So here we have... Just to show it to you, you can see right there, you can see Lek Leka, right? Lek Leka, right there, right? Okay, as we turn the page, and of course the Hebrew is from right to left, not from left to right, so the book opens oppositely. You'll see something right here in chapter under Genesis uh, 12, Berashit, um, the Berashit Lek Leka, uh, chapter 12, verse 11. Now, in the English it reads, And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, talking about our black Osarian, Assyrian ancestor, Abram or Abraham, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said to Sarai or Shorah, his wife, Behold, look and see now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. A fair woman. In other words, a beautiful woman. Not fear in the racist American uh, PTSD, post-traumatic slave disordered sense, that you're fair-skinned in that sense. But the fear actually means beautiful. In other words, beautiful. You are beautiful to look at. Now, the footnote I had highlighted this from before, and perhaps you can see this here. You can see it's somewhat highlighted. The highlight is still, is still evident right there. Perhaps you can pause this and read it, or what we'll do is um, 
let us show it like this, all right? Let us show it like this. Now, you see, you see where it says right there? Can, can you see this clearly? There's a little shadow. Let's see if we can. Okay, this is a little bit better right here. Okay, it says, Behold, right? It says, Behold, behold now, I know that thou art a, what it says, a fear woman, a fear woman, right? Knowing that you are, what it says, beautiful, I realize that your beauty is now a source of, what it says, a source of danger, particularly since the what Egyptians, you see this right here, are what? Dark-skinned and ugly. Wow. Wow. You see the overt racism right there? It says particularly. Now, this is all based on the so-called um, Jewish or Talmudic um, rabbis or rabbis, and you, it's a little blurry right here. We can see through the view. It's a little blurry right here, but you still can make it out. It says, since the Egyptians are what? Since the Egyptians are dark-skinned and ugly. Now, the so-called Midrashic explanation is that Abraham had not known her beauty hitherto. In other words, that before this, Abraham didn't know that his woman was beautiful, what, they, what the so-called OJs are trying to say. Because uh, Sarah, in her modesty, was always veiled. In crossing the river, however, her face became, it says, exposed, according to, I think, ours for Rashi, and observed that it was Abraham's practice to describe Sarah or Sarah as his sister, when wherever he went, the narrative it says uh, mentions it only where it is of particular interest. Now, this is not the only case where they say something to that effect, as it says right here, that the Egyptians are what dark skin, that the Egyptians are dark skin and ugly, dark skin and ugly. So. That is another clear and apparent case of um, the OJs or the other Jews' uh, racism, um, which is kind of hidden and veiled and concealed in their uh, Chumash and other Judaic books. But most of us who have been studying like this, and I'm sure even among the Beit Israel and other black and African Jews who, whether they've converted to the OJ's interpretation of Judaism, the Abrahamic faith or not, probably most likely have come across this sort of um, racism within the text. So this is a clear sign, once again, of anti-Semitism. But anti-Semitism by the so-called OJ's, the so-called Jews. And we was going to teach, I'm still planning to teach, um, continue the teaching that we have here, but as we was going across this and, and looking at some of the notes, we couldn't help but see our former um, highlight where it says that um, particularly since the Egyptians are dark skin and ugly, since the Egyptians are dark skin and ugly. So that's just a little point right there, of course. We don't agree with that, you understand, because that's not the truth. That is their particular spin, spin on the matter. So when the OJs or other Jews try to accuse anyone, especially us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel of, of racism or being anti-Semitic, you understand, first of all, know yourself and, and bring forth your proof and, and the truth. So this is just one particular area, and there's a couple other areas, too. I think we've highlighted them whenever we've come across them. Within the holy book, within this is a synagogue Torah. This is what they basically, and I think they probably still use it, or maybe they've updated it somewhat, and this was produced back in the 1940s. And you might be able to find a, a copy of it, but it's very rare, really, to find a copy of it. So um, to the OJs, you better repent and correct your behavior, you know, because you're, you're obviously, you're obviously um, found out for what you've been doing and what you've been saying, what you've been teaching, what they've been teaching their children, that the Egyptians, 
and by extension the Ethiopian. So when we look at what's going on in the so-called uh, state of Israel even today amongst the Ethiopian Jews and the African American, uh, the African Hebrews of Jerusalem, and even I and I and us over here in this particular region, it's very important for us to have the evidence because it says, "Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free." So stay tuned a little bit more to come. Shalom, Rastafari. <laughs>